Hello guys and welcome to another video with Cass on the Mesma channel. Today I'm going to show you how to control multiple devices remotely using a single wire. Allow me to quickly introduce you to the concepts so that we can see a few working examples and then I can finally proceed to doing a tutorial for you guys. The system you see in front of me is capable of mapping uh, each of the, the inputs in the green circuit into a different output uh, in the red circuit there. So if I press the second button, I activate the second device represented by the second lamp and each of those will work uh, as expected. So three and four, and as you can see, we have five inputs and only four outputs. So if I press the fifth one, none of those will be activated. What we are trying to achieve here is remote control using a single wire. So you have an input here, so this is a device, uh, and you have a wire here represented by the blue circuit. The, the blue circuit could be extended as far as you want, uh, as long as you preserve the signal strength here. This is why we have this alter, uh, alternating between blocks and rest on dust and comparators here, so we don't have to add uh, that much delay to the circuit. And finally, we have a very simple system to decode the signal strength here. So every time you press a button, only one of the devices will be activated at once. Here is a cheaper version of the same circuit. As you can see, the green circuit remains the same. We don't need to place the, the blue circuit here because you guys already know that we're trying to transmit information using a single wire. But now, as you can see here, if I press number two, I get number two. If I press number four, I get number four and so on. But as you can see, the outputs here are inverted, which is not a bad thing here because you have to amplify the output any, anyway. So all you have to do is to use a torch here or here or here or here and if you get rid of the solid block here you can also have a torch here or even here and your output will be amplified by this. The way this works is we are using the green circuit to encode signal strength information. Say we have signal strength level 2 as input here. So what happens here at the decoder level is that we will get signal strength level 2 here. So this will decay to 1 here. The comparator will copy its input into its output. So this is, with, this is going to be signal strength level 1, and then this decays to 0. So signal strength level 2, you suppose that you activate the second device. So what happens to anything before the, the selected device is that uh, it will power those two at the same time. So this line is trying to power the lamp here, but because this other line is also powered, the repeater will kill the signal before it has a chance to power anything. Thing is a little bit different uh, in the selected device because only this line will get powered since this is signal strength level one. So the lamp will get powered, but the circuit supposed to suppress uh, the powering of any device here is not activated. And uh, further from that, everything that follows will have signal strength level zero, so they will never even get power. So this is how we select a specific device using signal strength. The signal strength can be interpreted as the amplitude of a pulse, but a pulse also has a second property, which is its length. And as you can see here, we have a wire uh, and we don't care about the signal strength in that case because this is a different kind of decoder. Here we are trying to decode the pulse length instead of the pulse strength. So if I press the first button here, we activate the first device and the second button, the second device. Uh, this button here will activate that specific device and so on. And we are using the length of the pulse here. As you can see, when I press a button, it will either have a direct path connecting it to the main line here and then to the decoders, or it will have to go through a few repeaters, uh, which effectively lengthens the pulse here. Uh, I included the orange button here just as an example to show you guys that if the pulse is too short, none of the devices will be able to decode it, which is also useful. Uh, this happens because of this comparator here. This comparator will not be able to read a one tick pulse here. And the way this very simple circuit works is uh, once uh, any pulse length gets in here, it will first have to empower this torch here because this, the torch is effectively blocking the comparator from working. So once this blocks, the solid block gets powered, it will empower the torch. So basically it makes the signal, the, the length of the signal being a, a one redstone tick shorter. And it also tries to activate this, uh, this repeater here. But if the signal is too long, then 
this this repeater lock will be activated first and then this guy will never get a chance to activate because the torch forces the comparator to wait one redstone tick before sending the signal the signal is always shortened uh, as it passes through all the units so if it has say uh, a pulse length of three it will be three here as in the input then it will become two here and it will become one here and the one tick pulse will not activate the comparator so it will it won't be able to to lock the repeater here so the, the output will work because the repeater can read uh one tick pulses and because this is, this is too short it will not be able to activate the next unit so as soon as uh, the signal finds uh, its destination it will never propagate further uh, which is good for performance this is a very simple pulse length encoder and this is connected to a device back there using a single wire back here so this device can uh, this device provides three different functions that I can access using this wire here so if I press the first button it will increase the score back there so I can press it again and you guys can see that the next lamp will turn on I can also uh, decrease the value so now we have well, one less lamp lit uh, let's do that again and I can even clear the device completely so as you can see, this gives me full control of a score far away. I could maybe have to another button here and this would allow me to switch between multiple uh, scoreboards back there and then I could control all of them using just a simple encoder here and a single wire, no matter how far uh, the device is. Now that you've seen how to decode both the pulse length as well as its signal strength, uh, I think you guys are ready for this. So this is a machine that will decode 100% of the information contained inside a pulse, meaning it will both decode it uh, for the length as well as for the signal strength. Uh, what I have here is a green circuit that encodes uh, the pulse length. And on this other side here, I have a red circuit that encodes uh, a pulse strength specific so we get uh, both informations both information here together and we send it to uh, the blue devices the blue device is a decoder uh, it will decode both information and then here we have the purple device uh, which is a memory latch so basically it will whatever signal strength we try to send will be stored here permanently so let's say we want to store a five inside the first slot the first slot should be this one so i just have to press the first button here and now it's a five so let's say i want to store a one on the fourth device on the third device this one down here so button number three and it's now a one just like the fourth device so i just I just laid out uh, the circuit like this just to show you how how easy it is to stack those units on top of each other and this is a really nice application because with a single pulse uh, the system knows where to store the information and what kind of information is supposed to be stored i could as well replace the purple circuit which is a memory latch uh, with a uh, signal strength decoder so that instead of keeping uh, track of the signal strength here it would activate a specific device located here uh, or here or here and you guys get the idea so this is how powerful double encoding is now for the tutorial first let's see how to encode uh, signal strength so yeah you need to split the devices using uh, two, uh, two blocks here of space so this goes like this and the decoders are really simple to make place those blocks by mistake okay so uh, where where you're supposed to receive uh, the input which is here on the green block you place two comparators like this and then here you just need a repeater this repeater can be on two ticks as well if you want doesn't make doesn't really make a difference so place those all on subtraction, subtraction mode and there you go your decoders are here you can have your output being those lamps here just as an example it could be pistons as well doesn't matter or doors or anything 
and the input can be something like this. So this goes on subtraction mode. Then you place another repeater here, and just like just like so. And then you, we can have our inputs like this, and we can have buttons. You can shorten the pulses if you want as well. So we only have three here. Let's place four just for. So activate the first one, activate the second one, third one, none of those. Now for the pulse length decoders. So your input is going to be here and the devices go like this. So it's a torch here. You can have this in subtraction mode. And on the other side, uh, this will be the output. And this is supposed to, oh, I made a mistake here, just to block the signal here. So your output is supposed to be like this. So this can be extended as far as you want. If you need to place repeaters, you can also do this, no problems. So let's build another device here. So once again, torch, block this. And on the other side, just have your output coming out of this on Twitex. And then this is your second device. So for the input, uh, the input goes like this. I will do a big one uh, so that you guys will, will know exactly how the pattern goes. Let's, <laughs> another mistake. Let's use a piston here facing up. Okay. The simple pattern here it goes like this. So you have your buttons here. And all you need to do is to place repeaters here, alternating. And then repeater is on two ticks on this line. Then go like this, redstone dust on top. Don't forget to place those repeaters on two ticks. I can never emphasize this enough. And then just go like this, and you can expand this to as many inputs as you want. So this is how it goes. And down here, we have another redstone line going to a solid block. Then you can have a dropper here, another dropper facing it like this. So destroy those, those face each other and a fern goes inside it has to be a fern here and finally you have to set this on one or two takes depending on the kind of output you you want so this will be more clear when you try to do your own projects and this signal of course i mean <laughs> this signal has to be of course amplified by a repeater so let's use a repeater right here and just extend this line right here so if we press the button for the first one, it gets activated. The second one goes, third one doesn't exist. And this is how you do uh, post length encoding and decoding. All right, so now let's make a device capable of decoding a pulse, uh, both into uh, signal strength as well as signal length. So we can start by placing repeaters along a line here. And then we can have solid blocks in between. So if you want to make a device here, just place a torch. So let's make it another device here and another one here. And those torches will block this. So this is the same thing that we did for the, the post length decoder. But on the opposite side, it's going to be a little bit different. So the second device is here. And the next device is here. So the output is going to be a pair of comparators like this. And then we also have a repeater going into the first one with redstone dust like this and solid blocks. So your output is going to be those blocks I'm placing now. Let's use lamps to represent the, uh, different devices. And the most important thing is not to forget to set those two comparators on subtraction mode. So this one and this one, this one and this one. And if you think about it, those are the specific comparators responsible for the input and output. 
There is also another difference here. So with all the devices I showed you, you can have a two tick pulse or above as input, but with the double decoder, you also need uh, to have three ticks pulse at least. So if you have a two tick pulse, nothing will actually get activated. So uh, with, triple, with a three tick pulse, we activate the first device, four tick pulse will, will activate the second device, that one, the last one would need a five tick pulse and so on, but I already showed you how to make a pulse length encoder, so I don't have to build this again. In this video, I showed you how to extract 100% of the information contained inside a pulse. If you want to learn more, just subscribe. See you. Bye.